In this section, we will talk about the International Criminal Court ICC, and its unprecedented move to issue arrest warrants for Russian President Vladimir Putin and Russia's Commissioner for Children's Rights, Maria Lvova on allegations of facilitating the forced deportation of thousands of children from Ukraine to Russia. The ICC is an independent judicial institution that was established by the Rome Statute in 1998 to prosecute individuals for the most serious crimes of international concern, such as genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and aggression. The ICC has jurisdiction over 123 states that have ratified the Rome Statute, but neither Russia nor Ukraine are parties to it. However, in 2015, Ukraine accepted the ICC's jurisdiction over alleged crimes committed on its territory since 2014, following the annexation of Crimea by Russia and the outbreak of armed conflict in eastern Ukraine. In February 2020, the ICC prosecutor announced that there was a reasonable basis to believe that war crimes and crimes against humanity had been committed in Ukraine and requested authorization from the pretrial chamber to open an investigation. One of the main allegations that the ICC prosecutor focused on was the unlawful deportation and transfer of population from occupied areas of Ukraine to the Russian Federation, in particular children. According to the prosecutor, at least hundreds of children were taken from orphanages and children's care homes in Crimea and Donbass regions and transported to Russia, where they were given Russian citizenship and adopted by Russian families. The prosecutor argued that these acts violated the rights of the children to their identity, nationality, family and culture, and amounted to war crimes under the Rome Statute. On March 17, 2023, pretrial Chamber 2 of the ICC issued secret warrants of arrest for two individuals in connection with these crimes. Mr. Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin and Ms. Maria Alexeyevna Lvovobolova. Mr. Putin is the President of the Russian Federation and Ms. Lvovobolova is the Commissioner for Children's Rights in his office. The Chamber found reasonable grounds to believe that both suspects were directly or indirectly responsible for the war crime of unlawful deportation and transfer of population from occupied areas of Ukraine to Russia. The chamber decided to make the existence of the warrants public in order to protect victims and witnesses, safeguard the investigation and prevent further commission of crimes. The chamber also requested all states parties to the Rome Statute and all states that have a legal obligation to cooperate with the ICC to arrest and surrender the suspects as soon as possible. This is a historic and unprecedented decision by the ICC, as it is the first time that the court has issued arrest warrants for a sitting head of state and a high-ranking official of a non-state party. It is also a bold and courageous move by the prosecutor who has faced threats and intimidation from Russia for pursuing this case. Russia has denounced the ICC as illegitimate and biased, and has issued an arrest warrant for the prosecutor himself in retaliation. The ICC's decision has sparked international reactions and debates. Some have praised it as a landmark achievement for international justice and human rights, while others have criticized it as a political interference and a provocation that could escalate tensions between Russia and Ukraine. The question remains, will these arrest warrants ever be executed? And if so, what will be the consequences for peace and security in Europe and beyond? The ICC prosecutor, Karim Khan, who prepared the arrest warrant for Putin, visited Ukraine four times in the year before the accusations were made public. During these visits, he met with the President of Ukraine, the Prosecutor General of Ukraine, and other relevant officials to discuss the progress of the investigation and the cooperation between the ICC and Ukraine. He also traveled to different parts of the country, including Kharkiv and western Ukraine, to witness the damage caused by the Russian aggression and to listen to the accounts of the victims and survivors. 
He visited sites of alleged attacks on civilian infrastructure, homes destroyed by missile strikes, and a care home for children who were allegedly deported or unlawfully transferred to Russia or other occupied territories. He expressed his solidarity with the people of Ukraine and his determination to hold those responsible for international crimes accountable. He also announced the opening of a field office of the ICC in Ukraine to enhance the presence and activities of his team on the ground. He said that his visits to Ukraine were crucial in deepening his engagement with all actors and accelerating his investigative work.